Welcome home. We are WNST. Towson, Baltimore. And Baltimore Positive. We're positively taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour out on the road. We're going basically everywhere this month. We're starting to fade these on Friday. Luke will be with us. Uh, we will have scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery. First, the Pac-Mans. I think we're going to have the Lucky Sevens uh, before the month is over as well. Uh, we will be at Cooper's in Timonium in Mays Chapel uh, on Tuesday, promoting Fleet Week. Then we'll be at Cooper's and Fleet Week down at uh, Fells Point later on in the month. We're going to be at State Fair next Thursday in Catonsville for a little breakfast brunch. The Orioles play the Blue Jays at 1 o'clock. Um, we're going to kind of hang out there before the game. Hope Getty Lee shows up on television at some time before first pitch. Uh, that is next Thursday. Later in the month, we'll be at Pappas in Parkville. We're going to be at Cocos in Lauraville the uh, second week of June. And we're also going to be at Costas before the Orioles game on the 20th. The Orioles play at Yankee Stadium. Uh, so we're going to do a little pregame there. And this guy and I have... Um, Somewhere around here, I have his crab mallet. I do have his crab mallet right here. Leonard Raskin joins us. I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, I did not use this crab mallet at Costas the last time we were there cracking crabs. But uh, it's been a little while since you and I have uh, cracked crabs and broke bread. Absolutely. Um, you were graduating kids. You were spending beach time in Delaware. You were doing work. I was Las Vegasing, And then I went to Pearl Jam in L.A. And then I went to New York to see the Stones. And now I'm just back work, 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 and trying to make the money that uh, folks, folks like you invest in the American dream at Raskin Global. But how was your summer? What's going on? What, what, um, what's tickling starting your fancy off, these days? Starting off good. Starting strong. We're, uh, we're getting ready for a little golf coming up next week, a little charity venture with Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital. Do a little golf on Monday. I have that in my Spend calendar. The day. Right? Yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. The, that is the 3rd of June, correct? That is the 3rd of June. We'll be at Hillendale. Uh, now, I have you in from like lunchtime. Like, I have you like 10 30 to 12 30. Because you know me, I'll come out and I'll hit yeah, hang out. Yeah, I'll hit a couple. Put I've seen your golden putter. Tell everybody about That's your right. putting. Like, you're, you're, you yeah, have so this I don't funny play thing golf. you do. Well, I, I don't play golf. It's, it's, it, I'm too competitive. I know if I go out and try to play golf, I'm going to have to take lessons. I'm going to have to play all the time. I'm going to get frustrated. So, years ago, I decided it wasn't something that I was going to take up as a hobby or any of that stuff. But, I do have an amazing putter, and I'm I'm pretty good. I, I putt. That's what I do. So when I go to a charity tournament like this, uh, we raise a bunch of money for the hospital or whatever the cause is. I jump in a cart. I ride around. And uh, when you get to the green, I'm there to help you putt for dough. And and so I jump I've out. I've seen you putt. I mean, you, you, I mean I, you, you could brag on you one way, but you, you know. Like decent play. You've obviously played a lot of play. You, you've taken the kid down to Delaware and you've we, played every course up the coastal. That's right. We play, we play all the miniature golf courses. I'm deadly on the windmill, clown's mouth, pirate ship, whatever it is to get a free game. <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Dinosaurs indoor in Ocean City. Absolutely. <laughs> and so I just take out the putter. I ride around. I meet the foursomes that are playing golf and I putt. And I have a great day. And out I go there. with you for the first beer. Yeah, we and go then I'm around like, and... it's golf. I got stuff I got to do. It's Monday. I got to get. And you but bug out. You know, I love coming out. Paul is out there. Everybody from the hospital. Tell people about the Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital, what they oh, should it's just, to know about that. It's, it's a great hospital here in Baltimore. They do great work for kids in our area and around. And I don't know the exact number, Paul, if somebody could get us the number. But I think it's over 50 percent, sadly. Over 50% of the kids that need care uh, that end up at Mount Washington can't afford the care, don't have insurance, don't have the ability to pay, and they do great work. They take care of these kids. It's rehabilitation. Uh, they, they, they do amazing work for these kids, and it's funded by uh, Medicaid, Medicare, charity, and we make sure that they have the money they need to do the things they need to do. Well, we'll be doing that on Monday. Uh, if you need more information on Matt Washington Pediatric Hospital, hit me. Leonard's out on the front of Baltimore Positive as well. Um, if, if there is a chance to get into the tournament. And, and I go every year, and it's such a popular tournament that the same people buy the, you know, they buy yeah, the sold every out. year and they come it's out. It's sold out. It, it, the weather's usually great. You moved it a little bit into June to get better weather. Absolutely. You've actually Absolutely. moved the site this year, too. It's at a new, a new facility. Hillendale. Hillendale okay. in, in Phoenix. So... Uh, it'll be an interesting, I've never been on the course. Be interesting to see how that plays. Looking forward to it. 
I hear your dog barking. My, yeah, my wife I'm good. And I, no, no, no. My wife and I were in New York the other day, and New York's about, like about great food, about walking, culture, all that. Pretty girls, but most beautiful women in the world. New York, everybody's dressed nice, but but dogs. It's like this great dog culture in New York that every you can't turn a corner without seeing and big dogs like your dog. Yeah, like, it's amazing. My, my wife sees Saint Bernards walking around Eighth and you know and the Bowery. You know what I mean? And what's really wild these days, you know, never you you and I grow. Growing up, this was never the case, but now every dog's a service dog, right? right. Well, at airports, and, you see that too, yeah. right? Sure, but but you go to a restaurant and you see a dog sitting on the floor next to the table with the people. Well, hopefully, well behaved uh, dog, too. right? Well, here's open, you know, uh, but but you see dogs all over the place just sitting there, hanging out with their humans. See, this is my thing with my wife. Like, we walk the streets in New York, and we're just. I'm a different dude in New York. Nobody knows me. I walk through, I, I walk at my own pace and right. I, I see that I buy it. I see, I just ate a pastry this morning, Leonard, that I, that I've been eyeing up in New York the last two, three trips. <laughs> I haven't bought it. Cause you gotta be, it's a pistachio chocolate croissant. We finally bought one. We had, we bought three. I brought one home. I'm eating it, but we're walked through New York and we just walk and walk. We, we did 38,000 steps on Sunday wow, and another 18,000 wow. on Monday and it rained. So like we just, we, and I had no idea how easy it is to get to MetLife Stadium from Manhattan. Now, I intuitively, it's the biggest city in the world. There's got to be a way to do it for eight bucks, and there is. You go to yep. Port Authority, you get on a bus. There's a special lane. It's you feel VIP. You you get to the Meadowlands in like 12 minutes from Manhattan for eight bucks, and I'm like. I would have been going to see Bruce all the like if I'd have known. Right, New York. We walk corner to corner, and my wife pets every dog. And every uh, dog's well, used to people. And the dogs in right, New York, because right. the ground's kind of gross and a little, it wasn't real clean on Monday because the cleanup crew hadn't been there since Thursday and holiday weekend. Yep. The dogs have little, little um, shoes, little shoes, right? Little footies on it's the dogs. It's tough to walk out there. Yeah, well, you know, but every kind of dog imaginable, and my wife greets every single one of them, pets every single one of them. That's her joy of be being in New York. More, That's more. It. I like to eat, look at girls. She likes to pet dogs. You know. <laughs> Leonard Raskin is here. He is Raskin oh. Global. He is more than the man on the shirt and the uh, and the crab mallet. Um, the American dream and money and all that. What do you make of the Orioles in all of this? I mean, have you been following and following. staying up with it? Because, I mean, I went from Vegas to L.A., L.A. home to New York. I was in New York walking around. I was literally – you'll love this because you're a hockey guy. I was in the epicenter – of Rangers fandom at a bar oh, called sure. Stout, right? Yep, I was in yep. a Rangers bar at four o'clock on Sunday afternoon before the Stones. It was third period of Crazy the Rangers uh, Panthers game. They Overtime. Were up, four, up four three. I was in the bar when they gave up the tying goal. Yeah. <gasps> dude, dude, it like hockey <laughs> and so I've been it's doing and the whole year, the time Rangers I'm hot. monitoring the no hitter. I'm right. monitoring the Braddish no hitter. So seven like, innings, seven innings, and pull them, pull them. I, I, you know, there's a different thing though. I think for you and me and guys that are old farts like us, we've had phones, yeah. we we can monitor all this. And I, I found my old pictures of my sports pager on my hip 30 years ago as well. <laughs> when the Orioles are playing every day, whether you're every into it, day. out of it, what you you realize Burns is pitching tonight, who they're yep. playing, whatever they're doing, it. it the heartbeat of sports has taken on a different tone for me after the Preakness with a relevant baseball team that yeah, I know is great. relevant. It's great. It's great to watch. It's fun. Uh, they're exciting. They're they're never out of a game. Score irrelevant. They they're in it, and uh, you know it's a new baseball. It's a new kind of baseball. I was watching the Bradish no hitter, seven innings, no hit baseball. They take them out, and I think to myself. I think Palmer would have beat Weaver senseless <laughs> if if he'd have been through seven. What would Jack no Morris hit? do to Sparky Anderson oh if he came God. out to take the ball? Well, you you remember was it the Super Bowl, right? It was the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey came up on Andy Reid, and the world was crazy because he gave him a little push, and because he didn't like whatever was happening on the field. So you can only imagine what pitchers would have done to managers. Seven inning no hitter taking him out of the game, but these days it's just normal baseball. Like who cares? I think it's disgusting. I get it. 
you know, he's he's got an arm. You got to protect his arm, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense. Dude's throwing a no hitter. Put him out there. They're, they're winning. They're winning big. Who cares? And then what happens? Bring in the reliever. Everybody knows what's coming. Right down the middle. Bam. There goes the no hitter. There goes the, the, the shutout. It is less than fulfilling in that way. From a it, fan standpoint, dreadful. It, it, it is um, dreadful. I mean, you, you should be disappointed as a fan. It was the only right? hit. It was the only hit. Got to give them credit. They gave up one hit. It was a home run. They lost the shutout. So, okay, they scored a run. But they that's won. the fan in you. Hold on a second now. <laughs> right. The I want to see the no hitter. You, hold on. The asset manager in you, if you yeah. own the asset, and yeah. the asset's arm almost had Tommy John surgery eight weeks ago to begin with. Yeah, with Got to protect him. And, Long season. You can't and the let doctors blow it out. are there, and you need to have him Take in the him rotation. Out. Take him out. Okay, look, so what it. are you doing? I get it. I just hate it. I, it. I get it. I hate it. Look, we put two pitchers on the IL in a week. That's not good stuff. Two starters, good starters in a week. And that's that not happened good about stuff. 30 seconds after they had the press conference where we went through a six man <laughs> rotation, right? Right. Six to three over in, in, in two minutes. We're, we're, we're four. What happened? Well, crazy. I, you know, the, the issue for me it, it, with, with, their pitching is it and you learn this and it's been so long since we've been any good and you right, go back to right. talk show walter hiding guys at the quality Inn in norfolk and shuttling guys in so he had enough bullpen arms on the west coast hiding guys out in fresno or wherever i mean buck did all sorts of crazy things aside from players association make it stuff to try to win right and this shuttle we have Vieira coming in this week and, and Aiken's been no good. And we've already been down on Kimbrell after the 13 million. And he's not like an everyday closer, right? There, there's no doubt about this, that the sensibilities of their baseball management, their asset management team from yeah. your, your yeah. perspective of saying, we're not having Bradish's arm fall off. We've already no. had enough problems in the bullpen and they're going to have to make deals. And that's, what's made this much more of a Rubik's cube for me to say yeah they're really good they're really young yeah they got but they're not their pitching's not good enough they have these outfield problems with these veteran players they have an asset management issue to say cedric mullen stocks down right urea stocks down uh, austin haste it was all-star stocks down and, and their cost is going to go up and what are we going right. to do with kerstad and we, right. every day stowers is up now not yeah. going, not and going he's, hitting. he's hitting right so every day holiday this, Jackson this is Holiday. a great soap opera we're in the middle of. It look, really is. Look, it's a good problem to have. They got they got great players. They got lots of talent in the minors for the first time in a long time. They're deep, and they're deep enough that there's somebody knocking on the door all the time to get in. And you can't ask for better than that. There's guys knocking, and general manager's job, manager's job is to figure it out. They got to figure out who to play on what night. And who to bring in off the bench, and and who to pitch, how long they're going to pitch, and what this bullpen is going to look like, and who's our closer? Uh, do we go get another closer? Do we put our closer in the eighth? Uh, I think he's like every closer, right? He's he's a head case. Everybody expects the closer to close every night, no matter what, never fail. Well, they fail. You know, he blew two two uh, saves. Okay. So he came in and the seventh got his little confidence back, pitched a couple ninths and tenths, and won some games. He's been really good since he blew those two saves. You just need a little rest, maybe. So okay, you got to figure out how to use that asset. You know what's first, what's second. It's it's like uh, we tell clients in retirement. You know you got a lot of money spread out a lot of places. You got investment accounts. You got retirement accounts. You have insurance policies. You have your real estate. Everything plays a role when it comes time to retire. What asset do you use? First, second, third? And here we are. Brandon Hyde's got to figure out who to run out there every night, who to make play, who to make sit, and uh, who's good off the bench. You figure that out, you win. And right now, let's face it, in the division, the Yankees just are raw talent. <laughs> the, well, the they also have keeps... had assets in the past – to be were, able to improve themselves yeah. at this time of year. The Orioles are the team right now that have the assets that right. can 
outbid anyone for any pitcher that would if they want to would make a difference if if, if they, they want, want to. to and the, but they need to they need to yeah. do something i don't yeah. know where where that they could, look there's only got three outfielders every night and as much as brand Knight said, well i got 13 guys i want to play you can only play nine or ten of them that's right tuning even that's and right. when you bring curse that up and you don't find a place for him you send him back you bring stowers up better glove Cowser now is the center fielder mullins is lost in this and and Hayes has become a fourth outfielder. So we've seen this very, very fast transition. And part of this is Westberg's been real. kowser has been real. Ryan O'Hearn has screwed up all of their plans in so many ways. I mean, Ryan O'Hearn's blocked Kerstad and Stowers and Jackson holiday to some degree because Mateo's played well. Absolutely. So, so you got to put him in and, and they got to let some cook in the minors a little longer. Yeah, let that uh, crock pot bake. You know, <laughs> let him down there. Well, the thing about Holiday is they sent him down there with specific changing principles That's for a right. 20-year-old hitter. And the fact that he's struggling a little bit down there, they're asking him to do things differently That's because right. what he's doing wasn't working from a bat speed perspective, from yep. a yep. from from wrist, all of that. They 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 want him to do something differently, and that's what they're training him to do in Norfolk. So and so he's um, got to do it. He's got to yeah, prove. Listen, I asked Luke this week. I said they're going to make the playoffs, right? Okay, we're, we're going to sure. Who, sure. Who, is Jackson Holiday going to be their second baseman in October? And uh, right now, you, too soon to tell. Is. Smart too money soon to says tell. yes. Still, my money says it's too soon to tell. I uh, I would I would fifty fifty it. I don't I don't think it's certain. I think they caved to some pressure. I don't know who the pressure came from, family, agent, whatever, to get him up here. And I think on the one hand, if I was a devious, conniving, conspiracy theorist kind of guy, I'd say they brought him up and knew he was going to fail. <laughs> And and it proved a point to the world that was screaming and complaining that he's a major leaguer, that he's not quite ready yet. You know, he's 19. My God, the man goes on the road, can't even have a drink. Well, can't buy a drink. I don't know if he can have a drink. <laughs> we all had a drink, I think. Right. Let right. Raskin he can't is here. buy he is, a drink. He is Raskin Global. He does the American dream uh, when he's not jibber-jabbing with us. Um, wh- What's been on your mind with uh, with clients and, and, and people asking questions? What, what do you hear on the money side of things that you could share with folks here during the show? Sure, time? sure, sure. Well, I think I think two big things that I would say are, are up. One, uh, the election's got everybody kind of concerned. It's It's – out there, it's in the ether. I'll get you the date. We've got a great presentation, a great uh, evening webinar uh, that we can invite people to in September. We're going to hold off till September, get closer to the election. <clears throat> but I'll give away the secret ending right now. It doesn't matter, as Joe Biden would say. It doesn't matter. Uh, history shows that whoever's in the White House, whoever's in the House, whoever's in the Senate, your money makes money. If you're a prudent investor and you understand how to diversify, how to rebalance, and how to stay invested throughout, you make money no matter who's in the White House, no matter who's in the House, no matter who's in the Senate. The election does not cause trauma in the market, but people are scared. I get people every election that's Well, it's an, un- me, it's an uncertainty point. People love certainty. Right. They do. Right. They do. But I get people every election that say to me, I want out. So and so is going to win. I want out. The other so and so is going to win, and it's people on the other side of each saying, "Get me out because my guy, my gal, uh, isn't going to win." And the other guy or gal is going to win. It's going to be horrible. The world's going to end. Democracy as we know it, war, world war. Everybody that's on the other side is going to cause the end of the world. Not so. Uh, the, the, the financial investing world is fine. So know that, know that you shouldn't be making rash changes around your portfolio around an election. It just doesn't make sense. If you're invested well, you're invested well. If you need a projection, if somebody needs to be telling you, hey, this is who's going to win, this is what it's going to mean to to invest your money, you got a bad advisor. Nobody can predict the future. That crystal ball is cloudy, dirty, and don't listen because it's fake news. It's bad, bad information. It doesn't matter. In the long run, doesn't matter. The second thing I would say that's really important, we've seen it over and over 
and over again. Sadly, we get referred to people all the time that we meet after somebody died, a spouse, a parent, a sibling, whatever. And they come to us to handle the uh, estate, the distribution of the estate. And Nestor, I'll tell you this, people's beneficiary designations, that is the simplest thing you can do if you have an IRA, a Roth IRA, a 401k, life insurance. Know who's work. getting it if you get T-boned at the red light. It's macabre, but no, but get it to who you right. want. Get it to who you want, when you have to, how you want. And time and time and time again, the beneficiary designations are not in order. People leave them to the estate of, people leave them to minor children, people leave them to ex-spouses. Pe- uh, we, we had a case where a guy had a beneficiary designation. Nobody knew who this one person was on the beneficiary designation we were referred to. It was some like high school girlfriend. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> for a part of the money, for a part of the money. Nobody knew. And nobody can ask him because he's dead. Uh, right. You just, it's the easiest thing. Wherever your IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, life insurance is, get a beneficiary form, look at it, update to what you want now. Don't think that the company has it on file correctly. Check it, update it, make it current, make it right. Here's the other thing that happens all too often. You have a 401k at work. This is not big deal. It's held through your company at Fidelity. They hold a lot of 401k money. Lo and behold, somebody got to your employer. They switched the plan to Vanguard, or they switched the plan to Principal, or they switched the plan to Empower, and they take over. And Nestor, I'll tell you this. Third, half the time, the beneficiary designations on your account don't follow. Wow. So you had it with company A, you had it right, company B takes over. One of the things they send out when they take over is, please go online, update your beneficiary on file. People don't do it. It doesn't transfer. And you thought it was your wife, and it's not. You thought it was your kids, (laughs) and it's not. You thought whatever it was, it isn't. And it's the easiest thing to get right. And I can tell you over and over. And sadly, uh, we've had court cases. We've had to deal with expert witness testimony, dealing with the plan and the plan's beneficiary because people don't do what's required, which is a simple form, which takes five minutes to fill out at their custodian. I, I implore people to check, check, check who your beneficiary is. It's, the again, the easiest thing you can do. And we've seen too many of them just this year. We've had too many cases where we've been referred and things weren't right. Uh, and it's a tragedy because who you think's getting it isn't getting it. Who thought they were getting it isn't getting it. And it's a bad day. You, know, you lost somebody that matters in your life. And then you find out you were supposed to be the beneficiary. You're not. Uh, or somebody's getting money you can't imagine. And uh, these things take on, take on too many times a life of their own. So, Find your beneficiary form, get it filled out, get it right, and know that whoever's in the White House, your money doesn't care, the market doesn't care, capitalism reigns, companies make money, people receive profit from those companies, and those companies don't care who's in the office. That's the two big takeaways. Let her ask him with uh, words of wisdom. You know, I, I, that beneficiary thing, I, I think I've known you, I've known you a long time. I think we may have discussed it one time on the air, but sort of that... That's a universal thing. That sort of applies to everybody in the audience. Everybody, and everything. Literally everywhere. So uh, let her ask him with great advice like that. He does that for me, my family, uh, in following our American dream, which – Took me to New York to see the Stones the other day. Hey, I'm telling you, don't be intimidated by a show at MetLife. I mean, stay in the city. It's it, it was dreamy. It was it was better than most cities I go to to go to a show, to be really honest with you. There you in go. And out. It, was, it was New York. They had to do things there. They Ranger Town. Ranger Town. Well, I, you know, Kenny Albert, um, when the documentary came out about a month ago, I yeah. invited Kenny on because Kenny was – Kenny's a key, key – yeah, figure in my life and my career always will be right. I mean, from yeah, sure, sure, sort of magic 
point in my life. And um, and Kenny will come on anytime I ask him. And he's the busiest man in the world. He's Absolutely. Got kids and, family, and all that. And he, I hit him at the beginning of the playoffs. And he's like, hit me next week, you know. And I didn't hit him because the Rangers haven't lost. Right. <laughs> so two I'm, to two like, against the more. Florida Panthers. I'm like, yeah, I'd rather have him on after a Stanley Cup. You know, maybe it'd be That's more right. fun to have him on later in June. So, That's uh, right. But I will get Kenny on, and I did think of him often when I'm in that bar. And I'm wearing Ranger blue as my Ro- uh, right. Raskin Global shirt here. That's but, right. Dude, it was – and Ranger fans, I don't – they're young people, and they were pretty girls, and they were drinking beer. Everybody was having fun. I'm in Manhattan. I'm like, man, the Rangers sort of own New York. They no. got it right now. They're it. Let's face it. No Knicks. Yankees aren't relevant yet. Yet I mean, Mets it, stink. It's, it's too soon. Mets stink. So let's let's rage her up. My favorite two, two. When, all, when all the Philadelphia teams stink, that's when I love. That's when life's really good. Pittsburgh right. too, but Brilliant that doesn't Pittsburgh. happen often enough. Uh, he is Leonard Raskin. Uh, he does the American Dream. Find him at Raskin Global. We also have a brand new website. Uh, everything's new. Out of Baltimore Positive. Big thanks to Jessica Vallis, who I'm going to get on the show soon, and Hartford Designs, uh, as well as uh, my team, Web Connection, and, and Mike Rosenfeld. Uh, we launched a new website on Memorial Day weekend. All new pictures, all new graphics, all new cool stuff. Uh, make sure you're checking that out as well. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. Getting that Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out, getting our Jones going all through June while we watch baseball each and every day. We're BaltimorePositive.com. Stay with us.